Sherlock, this is my favorite Monet. Isn't it marvelous? Hmm. Oh, yes, I suppose. Stop that, Sherlock. I didn't bring you here to sulk. You need out of the house once in a while. I'm perfectly fine being at home for days on end, Trotson. I don't have the incessant need to be out among society as you do. No, but I'm not fine with coming home every day to the smell of some toxic chemical or the burn marks from one of your experiments. I can't handle that every day, Sherlock. So, we're going to soak up some culture at the art museum. You call any of this culture? This isn't culture. This is the idealization of delusional stallions and mares who are hiding from their own problems or overly indulged in ambitious ponies who are attempting to disclose secrets in the clandestine guise of fine art. If you don't like the pictures, Sherlock, at least look at the colors. I don't see them. Don't see what? You see everything. The colors, Trotson. You mean you're colorblind? That's ridiculous. <laughs> you insult the colors of my jumpers. No, Trotson, don't be stupid. It's beneath you. I meant these paintings are dull. The world is dull, really. Oh, this is that being bored rubbish again, isn't it? Not entirely. The world we live in, full of ponies and sickeningly sweet pastels. I see that. It's vital that I see that. But I don't see it as they do. It's not stimulating to me. Oh? Why? There's nothing to discover. I don't understand. Not surprised. Honestly, I haven't seen the world like that in a long while. <laughs> not since... Since when? Tell me. It's not important. Just something from when I was younger. I really wouldn't mind knowing. What does it matter? It's what friends do, Sherlock. We share memories about when we were cults. Like, when I was a cult, I tried to get a ball out of the tree with my magic and made the branch I was on break and hit a filly in the head by accident instead. That sort of thing? Really? You hit a filly in the head with a tree branch? You're trying to go off topic. Not about me, Sherlock. I want to know about you. Now tell me. Fine. Fine. If it'll make you stop. I was in secondary school, here in Canterlot, and I was then, as I am now, brilliant. While my peers were oblivious to all the things that they could know or see if they'd only paid enough attention. Studious and ever curious, and always on the hunt for the next great puzzle. One day I came afoul of a rather pesky parrot that decided my tail looked like a smorgasbord of worms. And tugged. The parrot's owner was a Texas by the name of Victor Weathers. Oh my goodness! Are you alright? I'm terribly sorry, Penny tends to get herself into trouble. Victor wanted to make the incident up to me, and began our odd acquaintanceship. He was... not boring, to say the least. He studied the sciences and law as I did, though he did have too much of a fondness for fictional literature. He also thought that the world was overall rather boring. His father was a weather pony and expected Victor to take up the same occupation. It's so tedious, so lacklustre. What is the point of pushing clouds around and shaking them up to make rain? I could never demean myself like that, Sherlock. There's got to be something more exciting, more fun. I even convinced him to assist me in experiments, though those results were rather incendiary. <coughs> Sherlock, you nearly incinerated the laboratory. We were amiable, to say the least. One day he and I were returning some scrolls from the library when there was a sound that I'd never heard in my life. It caused the ground to rumble. I felt the prickling in my hooves that went up my legs and sparked in my brain. Then we saw it. It was a phenomenon unlike any that I had ever seen, Trotson. The whole world reverberated, pulsed. I nearly fell from the power of it, and the colors, oh, the colors! Every single one of the Roy G. Van Spectrum, filling the sky from horizon to horizon. It filled my mind with so many questions. What was it? This array? Where has it originated? Was it magic? A unicorn's doing? An alicorn's? I had to know! When I turned to Victor to ask him and suggest that we investigate... He had already gone. Victor had fled, run away from the astounding, possibly dangerous event. He didn't return to school, and I didn't know what had become of him until two weeks after. 
He had left to go to a weather magic school. He was going to take up his father's occupation. But what about the array? Ah, that I pursued for a time, only interrupted from my search for answers by cases that came up. I finally found the source not long ago, actually. A Pegasus mare from a competition of some sort. I've deleted the specifics, but the exact same event happened then, and at the royal wedding, I believe. You mean the Sonic Rainboom? I read about that. That's it, the Sonic Rainboom. Absolutely fascinating that a single mare with an unusual combination of colors in her mane could create such a feat. But it wasn't the reaction itself that made me see those colors, Trotson. It wasn't? No, it was the mystery, the lack of data, the potential for all of the explanations. Where, what, when, how, why? Those things, I needed them answered. Anything that grabs me so, it makes me see the world in all the minute palettes that exist. What about Victor? Oh, never heard from him again. Not bothered, really. And that, Trotson, is why these paintings hold no color for me. I know what created them. I know who created them. How they were created, when, where, and in most cases, why. There's no mystery to them. No intrigue. No color. I suppose that makes sense, in a way. I think I understand. No, you don't. Oh, for once, Sherlock, you are very wrong. I am never wrong. This time you are. I felt the same a bit. When I was sent back, things were just, well, boring. Ah, uh, I see. It's not boring now, obviously. It isn't? Of course not! Oh. And honestly, Victor sounds like a terrible friend not to have at least said anything. Friend? Oh, Johnson, he wasn't my friend. An acquaintance only, not a friend. Ah, I see. What was that painting you enjoyed? The Monet? I thought you weren't interested in them. And I thought sharing was one of the things friends did. I'd like to know why it's your favorite painting. Yes, okay. Well... This has been a Not My Division division of Pony in the Box Productions. In A Dash of Color... Sherlock Hooves was played by Shirley, Trotson by Jester Dirama, and Victor was played by Wolfie. It was written by the fangirl, audio editing was done by Tristan, and the poster art was drawn by Quarter Awesome. My Little Pony Friendship is Magic is copyright of Hasbro, and the adventures of Sherlock Holmes are credited to Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. See you next episode.